Welcome back to George Woodshop. In this video, we're gonna make a base for our dining room table. Now, if you haven't seen the first video where we made this top, make sure you click here and that will take you to the first video. Now, the base in this project is pretty simple. It's just four square legs with four straight rails. Now, the legs, they're about 90 by 90 millimeter stock and they come in at about 720 millimeters high. And then the rails, they're 110 millimeters stock and they're about 25 millimeters thick. And as for the length, well, that depends on which one you look at. So let's have a quick look at how we made these legs. Now the method I use for making these legs is one I hadn't actually used before. I'd only read about it in magazines and online. From the outside, these legs do look like they're just a solid beam. I mean, there's no glue lines and things like that. But in reality, these are made up of five different pieces, or in other words, they're a veneered leg. Now the reason I chose this method over, say, laminating two or three pieces together to get the desired thickness was because I didn't want there to be any glue lines running down the middle of my legs. So by using this method, we ensure that we have a really uh, almost invisible glue line with a really good grain match on all four corners. Now, as this method is quite involved, I'm not gonna be able to go into all the details in this video, but if there's enough interest in the comments, I will make sure I do a dedicated video in the future, which explains this uh, process know. in detail. Now, the process is split up into four stages. And the first step is resawing the veneer. And really, you do need a bandsaw for this. Now, the secret to making your legs have the best possible grain match is ensuring that all the veneer for the leg comes from the same board. The second step is preparing the leg blanks or the core material for your legs. And that is just ensuring that it's nice and square and then trimming it down to an oversized length of about 750 millimeters. It's also a good idea to try and get quarter saw material for your leg core because that will be the most stable material you can possibly use. Now the third step is the glue up, which is really broken into two halves. The first half of the glue up is gluing on the two veneers to either side of the leg blank, so let's say the left and right hand side. Once that's dry, you'll send it over the jointer and bring it nice and flat and square again. Then you'll glue on the top and bottom veneers until you're left with a nice square leg. The fourth step is bringing the leg to be square and to its final dimension. So we'll run the leg over the jointer, then send it through the thicknesser until we've got a 90 by 90 square leg. From there, we'll take it to the panel saw and we'll trim it down to its final length of 720 millimeters. Now, like I said, this is a new method for me and it is a little bit scary using it on a paid commission like this. But luckily, the client is actually a family member, so the table is staying in the family. And uh, if you know down the line these legs fail for whatever reason, they'll know who to yell at and I'll be able to fix it for them and uh, you know replace the legs or repair it or do whatever I need to do. Now the rails on this project are a whole lot simpler. There's nothing you know hard about making these. I mean, really I think the hardest thing about getting these rails for me was cutting out one of my prized 400 millimeter wide boards into three pieces. With a rough stock for the rails cut to width, I then trim them to the rough length and send them through the jointer and thicknesser, bringing them to the S4S or square four sides. Then with the rails nice and square, I cut them to their final length of 720 millimeters for these short rails and 1,850 millimeters for these long rails. Now, joining this base together is loose mortise and tenon joinery. And if you've been watching the show for a while, you'll know what I'm gonna to use to cut these joints. And yep, that's the Festool Domino. Now to cut these joints, I just set the depth of cut on the machine to accept these big dominoes here, which is 70 millimeters deep. And then I set the fence so that the mortises are being cut halfway into these rails. Then using the built-in stops, I plunge in and I cut two mortises at either end of the rails. I repeat this process for the legs, but the only difference is, is I've reset the fence so that I'm getting a five millimeter reveal uh, once it's all assembled. Now the other feature that we have on our base here is these two pieces here. Now these are stretchers and they have two jobs. The first job is keeping these long rails nice and straight. So these are quite long so it would be easy for them to bow. Now the second job is actually giving us a place to secure our top somewhere in the middle of the base here. So it's sort of two purposes and adds a bit of strength to our frame. Now, the last thing we did to this base was fill all defects with epoxy, so just like we did with the top, and then sand all components to 180 grit. So with the base finished, I'm actually gonna take this table all apart again, and then glue it all together. So Thank you. 
So the glue up is now complete and we could leave it here and go on to actually getting some finish on this space, but I think we should do one more thing to add that little bit of extra strength. Now, these things here are just little corner blocks and they're just, you know, pretty simple. They're just a, a flat piece of wood with two mitres cut into it at either end and they're just 45 degrees for this table. Now what these do, they go into the corners of the legs, get screwed into the aprons, but then the leg also gets screwed into this block. So what it does is essentially it locks that entire joint together and ensures it will never come undone. Okay, so I think this is a fairly good stage to leave it. I mean, we've got our finished base here, it's glued up and all that really needs to happen now is a bit of tidy up with sanding and getting rid of these little bits of glue squeeze out and then applying the finish, but that can be for the next video. So like always, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button or the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. Uh, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel because I put out weekly woodworking videos, so that's kind of the best way to stay up to date. Now just quickly before I go, I have introduced a new feature on the website called the Viewer's Corner, and that's kind of a place for you guys to showcase your work. So if you've built something that you're sort of proud of and want to show off, make sure you send some photos to me and uh, maybe a short description or something like that, and I'll be sure to put it on my website. So the email address to, to send those to is in the description below, and it's also over on the website. So just head over to jawswoodshop.com and you'll see it all information there. So like always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.